And it's just a huge honor for me today to be podcast interviewing Carrie Ibbotson. She's been in the dental industry 20 years, including dental assisting, front office, office managing. She's a hygienist, sales, consulting, and speaking, allowing her to understand challenges and create solutions from multiple facets. When not focusing on the professional side of the industry, she spends ample time with the consumer population, helping mentor the public into successful oral health and wellness. Her non-clinical skill sets include marketing, office mentoring, podcasting, video producing, speaking, blogging, sales and oral health coaching she is a key opinion leader for dental companies and stays immersed in what the progressive dental world has to offer she can be found online at carrieebbotson.com and oralhealthcoaching.com her podcast healthy mouth healthy life is on itunes and her docuseries coming clean my journey back to a healthy mouth is on youtube it is just an honor that you came on the show today how are you doing I am wonderful, Howard. Thanks. How are you? If you've only been in this industry 20 years, I think I must have known you all 20 because it seems like my memories of you, your hubby, Ibo, go back a long, long time. I think that partly why I stay in this game is because I've been able to meet really cool people along the way because there's enough in here that gets a little crazy within our industry that if we don't surround ourselves with cool people that help bring us up, uh, a lot of us check out really quick. But are you cool? Because sometimes you're the carry on uh, Sarah Jessica Parker's <laughs> Sex in the City. Then sometimes you're the carry in Stephen King's Telekinesis. Which one are you today? For are, you, are you, I'm Are the you se- bipolar? Do you switch back and forth from Sarah, Sex in the City to <laughs> Telekinesis Stephen King? Of course. <laughs> Isn't everybody that – you saw that list. You, you read off that list, and while you were talking about the things that I've done, I'm like, no wonder why I feel scattered, A, and B, no wonder why I feel like I'm always – having to put something out because there's so many parts to when you step out of the clinical world, there's so many other things that you could do, but there's also so many other things within the industry as well. It just, Ooh, we are in an interesting time. I want to tell you why I wanted you to come on the show for a long time. And that is because, you know, dentistry, they're always talking about the mechanical aspects of drilling and filling and billing. And they're always wanted to find the cavity, drill it out, fill it and all this kind of stuff. And then I stop and look at the, the man behind the mirror and it's like, well, what do you want for your kids? Or for my age, what do I want for all my grandchildren? Do mm-hmm. I want them to have the best cavities drilled out of their mouth and filled with the best materials from 3M and Ibeclair? Or do I want them to never have a cavity? And, and by the way, I don't want to get sidetracked, but there's one thing I'm trying to, you know, one thing I'm trying to sell you on the show today is, is the orthodontist are the worst at it. I mean, we got records, we got records that the anthropologists are the ones who had to educate the dentist at, hey, dude, how come there's no malocclusions 150 years ago? How come we got hominid fossils? And we got, they got a ton of fossils that 30,000 years ago. I mean, mm-hmm. Peking Man, Java Man, all the, all these different cave sites. And like, why, what's with all this recent malocclusion? It's like, well, because women don't breastfeed their kid for two years. And they feed it applesauce out of a blender when you used to be in a cave chasing your mom till you were two or three trying to get some milk and if you were fed it was some leftover meat off a you know (laughs) off of some animal and uh, so since the kid didn't have any forces his palate wasn't spread so now you got to pull four wisdom teeth 25 percent of the time they got to pull an additional four bicuspids and we live in a society that's so twisted if you go to a movie And Arnold Schwarzenegger pulls out an M16 and kills 100 people. It's a family film, and everybody goes after church. (laughs) But if someone someone shows a mammary gland, they all run for the doors. It's rated R, and they want to close down the theater, and it's pornography. Uh, So, uh, uh, But let's focus on what you do, and that is I really like um, the fact that you're a hygienist whose sole passion is to prevent disease, not efficiently treat it. Correct. Because that's my history in my own mouth. I had a horrible mouth as a child with nobody that really, and maybe they spoke to me about it, but to be honest, I don't remember. There was nothing memorable about um, any proactive uh, education when I was a kid. And then I watched my dad also go through a series of tests because they thought he had brain cancer. 
and it ended up being a jaw joint issue. And so somebody was able to make him an appliance and he was a much better person. But there was three or four years that my dad was in debilitating pain from his mouth issues. And so I inherited that. I inherited bad things and bad understanding and bad structures from my family. And so that's what I had as a child. I had a horrible mouth. And when I got into dentistry at the ripe young age of 19, that didn't stop just because I started flossing and having fluoride and even being in the industry more. It stopped because I was able to have some really cool dentists that I assisted with during those times help me think outside the box and help me take control of my mouth and really start the healing process in my mouth. And I got to a place where I didn't need any more dental treatment that was based on disease and that's kind of where what turned me on to knowing even for even before dental hygiene school I knew that I wanted to coach the public because I would watch as an assistant people coming in just shortly after them having you know their their dental hygiene services they come back in they've got all that buildup in the same place that needs the restorative I'm like but didn't anybody teach you how to access that area and no you know they told me I should floss more they told me that I should brush better but when was the brush actually being opened and looked at and inspected and taught to that patient how to do it effectively and what that felt like and looked like in that whole languaging part? But that was pre-internet because you say, you know, you've known me for a long time. A lot of the things that we did was really before seeds that we knew that we wanted to plant We didn't know how we were going to do them back then. You know, you were the first of those guys way back on the compact servers, right, with with your the with the green lettering across it and the black screen, but there was no common day internet. So my trajectory has allowed me to, has forced me and allowed me to go into that side where I get to focus now with consumers and then do some stuff still clinically. Now, what was that? What did you say that? Com- was it Compaq? That, that what was, was that? Or like way serve. back. Well, yeah, CompuServe. There you go. See, you know, even I, that's- can, I can still remember my heart <laughs> flittering. The first time I joined dentists at CompuServe <laughs> and another dentist replied to me, I think I'm pretty damn sure it was Mike Barr. And I was going to say, I think it was Barr because I think I've heard you talk about it. Oh, my in, God. And I was like, way back when I was sitting like in my private office at my home at like one in the morning. I'm like, oh, my God, I'm, I'm talking to another <laughs> dentist and he's in Florida. I mean, I just, oh, my God, I got the disease so bad. But, you yeah. know, another but um, you have to be a coach. And a coach has to connect with its, its student. You know, like when people ask me questions on like leadership, they go, what, what books do you recommend on leadership? I go, well, none of them may apply to you. What, who, who meant something to you? Who connected with you? Was it a teacher? Was it a coach? Was it a mom or a dad? And dentistry, in order to do what you do, that hygienist is with the patient the longest, not the receptionist, not the dentist, not the assistant. And, you know, a lot of people say, well, banks went to ATMs because ATMs are open 24 hours a day. Well, when they went to an ATM machine, no one ever said, damn, I miss Carrie. I mean, the ATM's right by the door. I'm going to skip that and just walk in the door. When Blockbuster um, died at the hands of Redbox, it wasn't just because Redbox opened 24 hours a day. It's because nobody at Redbox was saying, Damn, I, I want to. I'm going to drive over to Blockbuster because I want to see Carrie. How do you coach a hygienist to connect and have a relationship with this patient so that you can teach her? Because what I hear from patients is, I don't want to go back because she's condescending. She said I had a bad mouth. She said I had six cavities. The doctor told me I'm not flossing. Everyone makes her feel mm-hmm. bad. Mm-hmm. And and so what? What? How do you get a dental team? to try to not go to the way of the ATM machine in the red box where someday we just sonic hair comes out with a toothbrush so damn good that, you know, hygienists are gone. And that's the funny part. Okay, so first of all, I got to speak at Dental Town this year. So thank you for allowing me the opportunity to speak there because this is exactly what we spoke about. So hopefully next year we can dive into that a little bit deeper because a lot of it comes with 
Uh, getting patients to kind of unpeel their layers, right? Most people come in with some sort of story in the past about exactly what you just said, right? So if you can show up for somebody just a little bit differently, and in that hygiene department is such an amazing opportunity because if you take yourself out of the mindset that, oh, I've got, I have to get all these things done. I have to scale all of this stuff. I have to polish everything off. I have to tell them what to do. I have to jump to solutions, right? We in our industry jump straight into solutions. And in doing that, we tend to bulldoze over our patients. So if we can figure out how not to do that in our appointment time, it makes a huge difference. And interestingly enough, the last couple months, I've gone back into doing hygiene at different offices. I've been, I have one office that I travel down to La Jolla that I've been there multiple times. And then I've been to a few more in Newport and a couple other places. And with this way that I tend to work with patients, people are high-fiving, they're crying, they're like, oh my God, doc, this is the most amazing hygiene experience I've ever had. I, you know, People resonate with this stuff and they find hope and then they're motivated to want to do something different. And I, a lot of times when we're in our forums and we see things and people are asking, patients are asking what to use and we're just saying, oh, just, you know, get whatever, whatever is whatever, whatever you'll use. That's such a backwards answer because that opportunity right there is a great time to show the patient where they're healthy and where they're doing something well enough and what that looks like in their mouth and then show them disease in their mouth and help them correlate that it's likely the tools and techniques that they're using and the fact that they just don't know how to do it correctly because they're putting in the effort. Chances are they're brushing, right? Most people are at least brushing their teeth, but they're not doing it effectively enough that they're seeing a good return on investment. And because I have my whole oral health coaching side where I coach the consumer that I never see clinically and they go to their own dentist, I have this really interesting Petri dish where I can do what I do inside a a practice, but then also see the results that consumers can get even when I don't actually touch them at all. I just help them through videos and tutorials be more effective and help them find the tools to use. So I think that's what it is. It starts in the hygiene department of asking questions, asking about what they like or dislike, asking if when you're working with them, my kind of my go-to opening few questions are is what has changed in your medical history? Because now I'm assuming that something has changed instead of has anything changed. So that kind of makes them think a little bit. And then what likes or dislikes do you have about having your teeth cleaned? And then that makes them kind of, again, flip another switch in their brain. And they're like, well, what do you mean? Well, do you not like Profi, you know, mint profi paste, or do you like to hold the suction, or is, you know, do you have a really sensitive tooth? Anything that you want to share with me that's going to make this more effective for you. And then right before I start working, the last question that I always ask, and if I don't, it screws up the whole appointment for some reason for me, but when I'm working with you today, if I notice something that looks like it's a home care related issue, is it something you'd like to know about? And then I have to shut up. And wait for them to answer because he who speaks first loses, but I want them to be able to invite me in and say yes. And 99.9% of the time they're going to say yes. And if they say no, maybe they're having a really crap day and you can actually honor that and save that appointment for them instead of irritating them or telling them all the things that they should be doing. I think that's what does it for me right there. Um. When you said whoever speaks first loses, who made the most money with that single understanding? Bernie Sand. Uh, Ber- what? Who's the the pyramid scheme guy? Bernie Madoff. Bernie Madoff. Yeah. <laughs> because he said when people would come to you, you know, all these people wouldn't come to him, and they know all these rich billionaires knew that you know he want they wanted Bernie to sell them on why they should put their money with him. And he knew that he wasn't going to sell because he, he was a scam artist. So he would just have lunch and talk and talk and build a relationship. And then finally, the guy who's got a million or a billion dollars finally says, why well, he's here. I want to invest in your fund. And he'd say, well, you know, right now we're taking, you know, only increments of $100 million. And they would just write a check. And nobody knew it was a fraud because he never spoke first. He never sold himself. He never sold the data. Um, I think that's very interesting that you have that in, same insight on, with how humans work. Um, so do you think, you know, but, but I know you, man. 
you're a passionate person. You're a fun person. You're a gregarious extrovert. Is this what what you do in La Jolla and Newport Beach? Is that trainable to your average standard hygienist? Yeah, totally. Because I've been, not only do I do hygiene, but I've done consulting. I went to school on the East Coast. So I went to school in Boston and I worked there. So it's not like I haven't, I've literally worked in just because of working, you know, temping or moving and doing all sorts of things. And then the other jobs that I've had clinically, I've worked in hundreds of offices. So I, and I didn't anticipate that when I was Uh, when it was happening for me, it was just a means to an end when I was younger, especially assisting and moving all over the place. But this has been something that um, you're, it's very easy to do. You just have to get out of your own way because it's the communication part. And I think that's what it is. You have to be able to practice these communication skills and hopefully you would learn to be able to do that within your team. And so I think that's where it creates a little bit of scariness for people is they might not feel comfortable with their team being able to make the mistakes of trying to say these things and languaging these things and not feeling like it came across right or you've made somebody mad or you've crossed a line or because I've had those things happen and I've worked through it and I've also had other hygienists that I've been able to coach and they've worked through it as well. But I think that's the scary part is you're going to make mistakes and you're going to fall down and you're going to say the wrong thing and you're going to irritate somebody, but you're still better off for saying it than not. And just because you're an introvert doesn't mean that you can't be um, a knee to knee face to face style hygienist. I've worked with a ton of hygienists that were introverts that, got to the point that they understood that their introversion was part of their personality. But at the end of the day, they were a healthcare provider. And how can they, how can they make that hat that they wear that much more successful for them? So it's, it's not rocket science. It really isn't. Well, if it was, I wouldn't be having this conversation because I could never get that far. But, uh, you know, but, but seriously, when I talk to dentists who are the employers of most hygienists, I mean, I've only, I think there's only what, seven independent, practicing hygienists and they're all in Colorado that have their own place. Are you aware of any others? Yeah, there's other ones. There's, is, is, how many states is it legal in? It's growing. It's continuing to grow. I don't necessarily pay attention to that stuff all the time, but it's definitely growing. And you see people with, you know, within our different Facebook groups that are doing independent work. Again, I think it's the no, business no, you're talking about side independent of it. work where an independent hygienist goes into a dental office. No, mm -mm. you're talking about independent work where he or she is working out of their, they own their own business. Well, yeah, because you have in California, you have alternative practice hygienists. So they have mobile units. They have businesses that they're running. Colorado has them. Multiple states. Maine, I think, has independent ones now. There's been a bunch that have, that are starting to really get on to that. Colorado. And what was the other one? Maine. Do you want me to look it up right now? Yeah. Hell I mean. I mean, I should have like the phone a friend. I feel like we're on a, what was that? <laughs> yeah. Who wants to be a millionaire? You can phone a friend. All mine be passed out at a bar. Uh, you can uh, ask the audience. <laughs> and what was the third one? But the point I was going with with that is that the ones I have met, and by the way, if you know of any, I, I desperately want to get them on the show um, because oh. it's a subject I've never talked about and I need, I, I'd like to do, I'd like to talk to every one of them because Everyone that I've met, well, I had a connection with them all, and she was the love of my life, Hygiena Shazammer. Do you remember Shazammer? Mm -mm. Oh, my God. She was just the greatest hygienist in the world. She passed away. Oh, she was your hygienist, right? No, she wasn't my hygienist. She was, I, I guess she was, she'd technically call a groupie. I mean, she, she came and saw me like probably 20 times in 20 years. And she passed away? And she passed away. She was about 10 years older than me. Uh, maybe 15 more, and uh, God, I never met a more passionate hygienist in my life. She was from Colorado, and she knew every hygienist in Colorado that was doing independent practitioners. But and but what, anyway, the point I was getting at was the fact that they were all rural. 
Mm -hmm. They all sacrificed their front, their, their dining room table. Like I did for my podcast show. I I killed my dining room table because I figure since we hadn't cooked on it once for 10 years (laughs) and the China closet didn't even have China in it. And, um, so, uh, might as well put it to good use, right? So so they put an operatory in there. So they didn't have rent, mortgage equipment, build out computer (laughs) insurance. They had no employees. They used their own iPhone, uh, for their booking on, on, they, they had no overhead so that when Delta would pay, $54 $54 for a cleaning, they were actually making money. But when you go into a dental office and after you get through the rent, mortgage, equipment, bill out, computer, insurance, malpractice, the dentists that are doing their math and are on top of their math are going, how do you pay a hygienist $40 an hour in, in, in Phoenix when, when Delta pays you 54 for a cleaning? And when you say, well, I want to, let's talk about hygiene or let's talk about hygiene, you're like, no, let's not. I mean, if a hygienist is in the room for an hour, Delta mm-hmm. pays me 54. But if I go in the next room and do a root canal, they give me a thousand and I don't even need a thousand. Then I go in the next room, pull, pull four wisdom teeth, they give me a thousand. What dental insurance has done is they've given us way too much money for root canals, crowns, dentures, partials, and then they don't give me break even money for a cleaning, exam, and hygiene. So when I was in MBA school, mm-hmm. I was, they, they scared me from going to a hospital because there were like, in my class of 200, several were coming from hospitals. They say, here's the deal with hospitals. Medicaid and Medicare and Blue Cross Blue Shield, they'll pay us $100,000 for a bypass. They'll pay us $75,000 if you got colon cancer, breast cancer. So we have to do, as long as we do three surgeries a day, we can break even. Break even. And if we do four surgeries a day, we're in the profit zone because we lose money on everything else. And I'm sitting there thinking, well, I don't want to be some fat old bald guy that goes to the doctor and, and he's looking at me like, well, I'll lose money on the exam and the statins and the checkups and the blood pressure. But if I fillet this guy open right now, I'll get a hundred grand. And it's like this well, third party insurance mm-hmm. company is forcing everybody to make it emergency room, high dollar treatment instead of what you're passionate about, which was build a relationship and let's get your oral health turned around and let's get preventative. Well, I think the cool thing about when you're, so there's two questions that you asked, but I think that what what I have found during my years of doing this is that there are multiple style types of offices, right? Like there's the tooth carpenter, which if you want, if, if somebody wants to be a tooth carpenter, that is a wonderful thing to do. We need people that are really good at fillings. We need people that are really good at providing that level of care but I think we have a hard time identifying really what type of dentistry we want to provide and if it is just insurance driven dentistry then it within that area I think where we make the mistake is the only financial contribution that we're looking at it with hygienists is what they're actually producing. So do you want a production focused hygienist or do you want a relationship focused hygienist? And both of those things are okay if you can figure out how to put those pieces together. But most people have some form of periodontal disease. We are not treating nearly enough perio issues. But if we started working at that aspect and that facet and playing around with that and what we do during those appointments, I think we are so focused, like you said earlier, on the treatment aspect that we don't put any of this in. And if you flip that around and you work on this stuff first and then you work through the treatment, what's cool about it is the treatment gets easier for you as the clinician, but also that relationship that's created, that's what's helping your patients say yes, right? Because it's about patient retention. Most offices don't realize what their acquisition cost is to actually get a patient to come in, and then what happens when we get them in? Are they leaving just as fast? You can get 200 new patients a month, but if those patients aren't staying, if they're not saying yes to your treatment, then how much more money are you wasting during that time by doing things that are ineffective and being a like a profi mill chat and polish type hygienist that is now focusing on therapeutics did i answer your question well yeah that's why i love you to death we're on the same page i ryan we need to make a slide for this uh, i think this would be a great slide just envision a teeter-tighter 
And mm -hmm. the um, the left side of the teeter tighter is the pre process. The right side is the post process, and what it's teetering off of is this huge pyramid of in process and dentists mm -hmm. always want to do what you talked about they want to get 200 new patients a month so they're pre-processed they're into marketing advertising social media taking every insurance and then post process um and then and then they get in the 200 patients a month um but they all go out the back door and if you move if you would take the fortune 500 took away pre-process um the the advertising industrial complex has been collapsing at a rapid rate for 10 years because all the big businesses like Chase and Southwest Airlines say, we don't want to get a new customer. We want to, we want to focus on in when they're in there, we're going to make it fun. They're afraid of flying. So what do they do? Everyone's afraid of flying. You go to United American, you know, their anal sphincter is so tight. They look like lawyers walking <laughs> up and down and Southwest is like telling jokes, singing songs. They know people are scared. Um, and they, they focus on the customer experience and they, keep the most customers for life. 27% of all seat miles flown last year were Southwest Airlines number one. And then there's the post process. Well, yeah, where you have a hygiene recall, um, you give warranties, you have home care calls. Um, you say, hey, if I'm gonna warranty um, this root canal, uh, I gotta take an X-ray of it um, at one year. Same thing with an implant. I mean, I, if there's some something going wrong with the root canal or there was some excess cement causing peri-implantitis, I mean, you can't come in here five years later with a failed root canal. But it, it's another way to get people back into your office, in. but, but <laughs> what dentists don't realize is that they'll practice from 25 to 45 in the same small town and they'll still need new patients because they're not focused on what you're talking about, which is relationship building in process in the dental office, the customer experience, so that we shouldn't be measuring the hygienist saying, well, we get 55 from Delta and she wants 40 and our overhead 65, the math doesn't add up. So then you start losing that relationship side of the business, and then you just move all your money to pre-process and your uh, marketing, advertising, social media, Facebook, Millhouse, and that's not very meaningful because the reason we went to school was to prevent disease and then cure disease, not so that we would just make a bunch of cash and then die in a coffin filled with gold coins. Yeah, and when you're, like I said, when you're, when you're patients, when you are able to establish a relationship with them and they're able to trust you and like you and you're able to support them in their decisions instead of being dogmatic over them, they will show up in ways that you couldn't even imagine. But they also start saying yes to their dentistry because they don't feel ashamed. They're excited to come in. They're, you know, there are a lot of other things that hygienists can and should be focusing on as far as wellness is concerned that scaling shouldn't be what the focus is. I don't care if my initial appointments ever even are based around a scaler. Because if I can teach you how to brush appropriately and if we can talk about that and if I can show you where you're successful and then help motivate you into being more successful in other areas by starting with a toothbrush. And I'll promise you that a lot of the offices that I go into, the dental professional doesn't necessarily even know how to use tools in a way to explain them to a patient because that's a different mindset, right? Like knowing how to brush in certain areas so that you're getting into areas and nooks and crannies that you're normally missing takes some thought process. And so really start thinking about what does that look and feel like? That's why I love my Tepe brushes and my burst brushes and the Butler gum brushes that get in between that have those you, you're talking too fast you just named three brushes tap what you said tap tap, tap, tap a. who makes that tap -E. is t-a-p-e by who t-e-p-e they are tepe tepe usa tepe usa tepe makes 20 different like style hand brushes they were at um hygiene town and i utilized their brushes when we were talking and every single person in there, you know, we start, we, we were brushing our teeth in the, in, in the talk, right? So in my, in my presentation that I gave, I gave toothbrushes out and we opened them and we started using them and talking about why these are different and then the talking point. So here's, here's a, um, here's a Tepe brush. So you can see like a standard brush would be something like that, right? 
Right. Or his Tepe brushes, so you can see a third of those bristles are extended. By the way, if you're listening to this on iTunes, you should really um, move over to YouTube and subscribe to uh, Dentistry Uncensored so you can see her demonstration. But continue. (laughs) So these are your Tepe brushes, right? Right. And that, so a third of those bristles are extended and feathered. So they're going to, while you're working with them, these are going to get into all those flossing areas. You know, we try and berate people into flossing, but guess what? They don't do it. And I don't blame them. I don't do it either. And I've some successfully managed to not need my teeth cleaned for the last nine or ten years, except for now because I'm going through this whole docu series. But that's that's another talk. And then here's like the compact tuft brush. So you can see here's a standard brush. Here's like a tepe brush. And Butler Gum makes some of these really good brushes too. These are um, like this is the deep clean. So that's Butler. Butler Gump. Mm-hmm. Now Butler USA is in Chicago, but is there is there a parent company in Japan? I don't know. That's a good question. I haven't asked that question. Um, and then you know, there's just, so there's just lots of different brushes, and if we teach people how to be successful, then then they're they're motivated to to do things. And if they come in presenting with gum disease. Take intraoral photos of it. Take intraoral photos of the bleeding, both for the patient and for the insurance company. Send those off with a narrative and bundle all of this type of crazy stuff into your scaling and root planning, if nothing else, but get your patients into what they can do to be more successful. Because if they present with disease, why are we just working with therapeutics in order to get them out of disease? Because it's never going to work. And if we're not creating some value for them to come see us as an office versus any dental office, then they're going to go somewhere else and who knows what they're going to be told. So while you have your patient in a practice, make it time well spent and teach them through empowerment and through you are already doing a really good job here. Wherever here is, I don't care if it's the incisal edge of number eight, look how clean this area is. You're doing this right. You're just not seeing the return on investment because you don't have the right tools. But we as an office really spend a lot of time trying to figure out the things that motivate you and make you happy and make you healthy. We invest in these tools and we have them here for you. Like, Every office should be a retail office. There's no reason that we shouldn't have retail products coming out of our ears because patients want them and they want them when they're there. And if the one that wants to go to Costco wants to go to Costco, let them. But most people for a convenient standpoint and a value standpoint and the fact that you're going to teach them how to use it, they're going to get it from you. I That's, that's my whole business outside of clinical practice is was wholesale retail of products in the first year like our first full year in business I think we had $160,000 in sales people want products but they want to know how to use them correctly and that's where you I believe that's why I think things like this need to be in practices instead of not they shouldn't be going to well, uh, first of all, you mentioned Costco, and people are starting to uh, um, wonder if Costco is even going to make it. Amazon has made such a penetration of online line. More people have Amazon Prime in their home than cable TV, mm-hmm. and Costco um, is, um, um, I mean, the, their, their days are, are looking scary. I mean, um, yeah. Um, uh, and most of these products are now available on Amazon. I think most people have gotten to the point now where, they've recognized that Amazon is here to stay and they've, and they've made that transition. So you can find almost all of the Butler gum products on Amazon and they have quite a few and as Tepe as well. Tepe oral healthcare is I think the one for the States. Yeah. And there's all, um, but anyway, um, what about, so, so you mentioned Tepe USA, Butler, um, mm-hmm. there was three companies you mentioned. Was there another one? So the new brush that I love for the electric brush, I don't know if you've seen this one yet, but the burst brush. So again, you can see those bristles are extended and uh, feathered. And this brush is a, you know, Dollar Shave Club, right? Yep. So this is like a Dollar Shave Club mentality for toothbrushes. It sold that for a billion dollars to who? Who who did Dollar Shave Club, uh, who did they sell to? Was it uh, Procter & Gamble? Uh, I actually have no idea. Oh my God! That that guy, I can't believe they. Crazy, huh? 
Oh, a billion dollars be, yeah. be, because because the five bladed deal. I mean, all they cared about was adding another blade every five years. They were like in a nuclear arms race with some invisible country, and these guys come out and said, "Hey, your professional barber he uses one blade, and we'll sell it for one dollar." And uh, yeah. I mean, a billion dollar company just because. And there's four to five it. different style blades that you can get on that, right? But it's a great mentality. So this brush is $70 if you buy it without a link. If you buy it from a link from a dental professional, it ends up being $39. And then $6 every quarter, these heads are mailed to you, automatic shipment. And what's that name of that company? BurstOralCare.com. That's a burst brush. BurstOralCare.com? Burst. They better love me for this one. I'm plugging all sorts of great things, huh? Well, yeah. Um, Well, let let, let, um, so those are the three companies, Burst, well, let's see if we can find that one. First, Tepe. Um, Ryan's there's got so it. many. Like, if you look at my program, I have seven pages of products that I talk through because it depends on what. Well, people, you should go on Dental like, Town under uh, hygiene and I hygiene. Need to get down. back in there. Yeah, you need to I go do. there, and uh, so I found it. It's Burst Oral Care. So, what's the burst? Is it a burst of flavor, or what, what's what's the? Burst? I think the burst is the Sonic. Bursting bubbles is where uh-huh. I think that that came from, if I'm not mistaken. I don't work for the company. I do have an affiliate link. And that's the great thing about that company is, and that's why they've grown so fast, is they're using, you know, the the word of mouth and the great products. But again, what I love about this brush is the fact that it has those extended bristles that get into the flossing surfaces. If if this were the only brush that I were using, I would say that the head probably doesn't last the full three months that you would get a new head, which you can order new heads at any time. But I'm a fan of using multiple products anyway, because using multiple tools because you're always going to miss something with one tool. So well, the one thing the I next remember, day, pick it um, up. I, I got out, you've been in it 20 years, I've been in it 30 years, and the one thing I remember the most, the first 10 years, is so many periodontists, you know, when, back then it was all gum surgery, mm-hmm. and it wasn't until I'd been out of school 10 years where they started switching to, well, we're not going to do all these quadrant gum surgeries, that tooth's got a 8 millimeter power, we're just going to pull it and treat it with titanium, mm-hmm. and then they, that was the next 10 years, and now they're looking at the fact that 20% of implants have peri-implantitis after five years, and after nine years, the studies show between 40 and 60%. So now I'm seeing the pendulum come back. But the point I was going to make is this. The first 10 years, the periodontists say, well, why don't you come in Friday, and we'll do the right side, upper and lower. And mm-hmm. then that'll heal up, and two weeks later, we'll do the left side. Well, a gazillion people never came back for the other side because they were, you know, it's like, okay, we're going to chop your right arm off. And then in two weeks, you're going to come back and chop your left arm off. But anyway, so so the point I was making is that a lot of guys had a lot of cases that, okay, so we did the surgery on the right, we didn't do it on the left, and Mm -hmm. then three years later, we can't tell the difference of anything we did. And then the cardiologists, the, the, the most coveted research primates on earth, are identical twins raised apart since birth. And whenever they find that, that is the mecca because then you can say what's genetic and what's behavior. But anyway, they were always saying, okay, every case they found where the one twin got the uh, the bypass, the quadruple bypass, and the other twin did not, but he quit drinking and smoking and he started taking care of himself. The person who did not get the bypass but started taking care of himself lived 3.6 years longer. So in my walnut brain, I always sit there and tell everybody, it's not what we do twice a year, it's what they do twice a day. Mm-hmm. And um, I, you know, I mean, I, it's, just, it's just everything. I mean, if you can get them into taking care of themselves, and this guy on the CDC the other day was giving this big old lecture about how the, the real answer to the rising healthcare costs is simply, you know, don't wake up and have a cigarette and a cup of coffee for breakfast, eat fast food for lunch, and then go to happy hour after work, and then sit on the couch and watch Netflix for four hours, and then think we're going to come up with a pill to reverse 24 hours of really bad decisions. But so my question to you is, um, do any of these brushes, toys, 
electric toothbrush, do you think that makes them more motivated to take care of themselves? What, what do you think makes them motivated to take care of themselves? Is it your connection with them? Is it product? Is it minty flavor? If you give them, if you switch them from manual to electric, do they say, oh, I got a new something to play with? What, what, what do you think makes them the tipping edge? What's the tipping edge? So I think that most, I think it's a great question. And let me go back to first answer my thought process on the, you know, the periodontist doing gum surgery and stuff like that. Because again, I'm working in an office that has me working with patients who their periodontist has told them not to brush their gums. And they've been seeing, they've been alternating. So I, I'm, I'm coming into a practice with a with a transition where a dentist was in there for 40 years as well as his hygienist and the 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 situation for most patients is not that they're coming in and they don't have health when they come in so how do you have that conversation in the languaging and so in doing a lot of the investigation in that it used to be again if you're not paying attention to these types of bristles and you're using things like this on your gums you're dang right you might be causing problems but toothbrush bristles do matter and that was one of the things that i've been on that soapbox for a long time people talk about sonicare being one of the most effective brushes well sonicare's head is like a point and when we polish we polish with a cup so we're not using things that are adapting and helping people with gum health. And one of the single most effective things that I've found is to get these br- these brushes in people's hands and teach them how to use them prior to instrumentation and let them feel what it feels like and then send them home with these brushes and let them start doing that because they're going to feel what that feels like and that motivation alone typically helps them connect their dots because I see it again both sides from oral health coaching and from hygiene so it's it's sometimes it's the mentoring and that's what I love about my program is when I get a dental professional that sends somebody for oral health coaching you're doing the therapeutic instrumentation but ooh, I get to help them create habits and things like that and use different things throughout the week to make it easy because a lot of times what we tend to throw on patients is too much at once and so I've learned how to bypass that by having an online program that kind of works people through creating habits so I think it's I think it's all of it but I do find that most people their first remarkable thing is I had no idea what it felt like to have my gums feel healthy. And that is such a game changer for me from my hundreds of people online. And and I love the way you, we, we've only been talking for, uh, well, we've been talking a long time. <laughs> um, I babble too much. Um, how many kids have got, I mean, what, what's the biggest joke in hygiene? You know, the, the, the hygienist or dentist asks the kid, um, how often do you floss? And he's like, dude twice a year and you do it both times and I always thought to why is a hygienist scaling a child's teeth and polishing and flossing it when the kid doesn't even know how and he's never done it once Mm -hmm. and you say well why don't you sit him in the chair and stain his teeth and get him a toothbrush and 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 he's just going to go random and then you can teach him how to brush his teeth and then with the floss why don't you hand him the the box of floss that he's going to have in his deal and it'll be the first time he tears it out and why doesn't he do that I mean it was kind of like the hygiene department is the exact opposite of piano lessons. You don't go to piano lessons and sit in a sofa and watch some lady play Beethoven. Right. No. She says, you play Beethoven, and I'm going to sit here and coach you. And it was the most miserable year of my life. The happiest thing that ever happened to me was not the birth of any of my quitting. children. It was when my mom said quitting after piano a year, lessons. I could quit piano <laughs> lessons. Oh, my God, I hated that. Um, but the bottom line is, why is hygiene... The exact, I mean, go to any sport, go to t-ball. The, the, mm-hmm. the, the, the parents aren't out there playing t-ball, telling the kids to watch, and we're yeah. going to show you. The kids are all out there while the parents are, are trying to coach, and it's exactly wrong, wrong, wrong. So you, you talked about uh, a couple of websites. You, um, for, for, you have two websites. Explain the difference between carryevinson.com and the other one, oralhealthcoaching.com. So Oral Health Coaching is a paid membership site. So when people say that people won't pay for OHI, I have to disagree because they pay 
for a membership site. So it's kind of like back six years ago when I first got ready to launch this, I said, Howard, will you please have a look at my program and 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 give a review about it? And you came back with, it's like P90X, but for the mouth. And so I had that, I still have that on my, uh, as one of my testimonials. So it's very much like that um, in the fact that it's videos, tutorials, closed Facebook group, me helping people um, get a better understanding of what they need to do at home and then how to do it effectively, how to test, so this, how to use. The, so it's oralhealthcoaching.com is the B2C site, business to consumer, not the B2B hygienist to hygienist. It's a Correct. membership site for patients. and for how, consumers. Consumers. How much money is it? Is it a... Is it a real? It runs between one hundred and eighty dollars and two hundred and fifty dollars. One hundred eighty to two fifty for what? For membership. Carrie, I'm gonna have to take you to the wood, the wood house, the barn. Why? Why? Oh my God! Why? Why is Netflix worth the same amount on Wall Street as Disney? Because Disney sells you a movie. They sell you, uh, we're going to go to a movie. What does Netflix do? They ding you for $12 a month. Why has mm-hmm. Amazon, Amazon gone from a $400 million market cap to $800 million market cap in just three years? And it's going to be mm-hmm. the first company, Amazon or Apple, to the first company ever in the history of the world to have a trillion dollar market cap. Because Amazon's got you signed up for $99 a month. It's the mm-hmm. recurring of you, yeah. you. So you take all this effort. And all this sales, all this pre pro stuff to get $180 out of them or $250. And then when it's over, boom, now you have to go back and find another one. Whereas if you said, there, Amazon Prime and Netflix, if you mm-hmm. said $12 a month, mm-hmm. but you get them in perpetuity. So, so it's, like, it's like a gym. No, I'm going to because they brand won't because they don't need me in perpetuity, and it's and you're and you're you not just wrong. Keep adding videos, you just you, keep adding YouTube videos. You get them. You know the the only way gyms work in America is that as on January first, everybody had a New Year's resolution. Mm-hmm. They join a gym. They say, okay, it's whatever a month, and after eight months is when the last person stops coming. But it takes about thirty six months to thirty eight months. Because you're driving to work thinking, oh, I need to cancel that Spotify or Netflix or Amazon Prime uh-huh. or Lifetime. But you're not organized enough. to. So humans are so freaking crazy, myself included, that once you get them on a reoccurring revenue deal, that's the business model. You want True. them to sign up. You want to take everything it takes to get them to sign up, and then you're going to get money every month until they die or, or whatever. So there's so so in the future that might be where it goes and that's where I would like for it to go. So I guess my want and ask would be, hey, let's get oral health coaching in every single dental office. I don't know if you know who Dave Ramsey is, but Dave Ramsey has this whole thing that's Financial Peace University. It has nothing to do with dentistry. We will not it talk has- about Dave Ramsey on the show because he has not emailed me back telling me he's going <laughs> to come on the show. I have emailed okay. Dave Ramsey twice. But he has his call, mentality call now. Oliver. He has he has brought down his his subscription, if you will, of what it of what it takes to go through financial peace. Right at one point in time, it was more expensive. My problem and my issue is, I'm still pushing this boulder uphill to the consumer, and the nine dollar a month right now revenue stream doesn't work for me because. It's still, I, I don't, ha- there's not thousands of people knocking on my door. There's more and more people every month. And I'm sure it'll get to that place where I will be able to bring it down to more of a subscription base. I've had it at a subscription base and I had it at 25 a month for a while. And it was still just, um, it was still a lot of work on my end. So this time right now, the reason that it sits at 180 is because I'm running it in nine week challenges. So I'm doing healthy mouth challenges in a group where I then get to do different things with them. So that's the imperpetuity could be there at some point in time. It, I just haven't been able to figure out how to create the movement I don't have sponsorship. I would love sponsorship. I would gladly take sponsorship from all of these people who I talk about all of their products and then lower the price, but I'm still stuck in that 
um, situation where just financially for me, I don't, I can't right now. I can't. So see, Disney will release a movie and it'll, you know, some Star Wars thing and it'll do like a billion dollars. And you'd have to have stones the size of Mount Rushmore to sit there and say, no, we're not going to do that anymore. We're going to live stream it. We're, you know, and, and, but the next time they have a billion dollar blockbuster, the only way you could get it is to sign up on the Disney monthly deal for $12 uh, dollars a month. And now they're, they just swallow the next Netflix. So the bottom line is, um, it's, that's why if you look at the fortune 500 companies in 1950, mm-hmm. by 20, 15, 88% of them were dead because they never can cross the chasm. They can't cross to the other side because they're being, everything they have is from the old world business model. Right. And they always get ran over from behind by the new world of business model, which is reoccurring revenue. Um, but um, um, I want to ask you another question. Um, you were also talking about teaching this kid, you know, brush here, brush here. Now we have some, well, now we have, you know, when I was in high school, this was an IBM mainframe computer that only mm-hmm. Fortune 500 and governments had. Then the, now everybody's got this in his hand, and there's some companies out there that are connecting these to toothbrushes. Uh, so, number one, the parents and the hygienists can say, oh, Johnny, guess what? You never used it for the last 14 days. Or it'll tell you you never brushed the inside. Does any of this smartphone app technology excite you or not really? Um, some of it does. I think, again, it depends on the actual usage of the heads. Again, you're looking at those companies, the Sonicares and the Oral-Bs, those heads aren't what I find to be most effective for the consumer. So it's. I think it's getting better. I think there's a lot of stuff that is on the rise. But again, what I'm doing right now um, is working for me. And so I'm kind of sitting within that because there's only so much time that I have for market research and bringing in a new product I know you're and, busy. and the doing only time that you do this shows on a Sunday night at five. I, mean, <laughs> I asked you Monday through Friday and you said, hell no, I ain't got time for you, but maybe the last, time for you. The last person on right Sunday. Before, the last so, breath so I another, take for the day. Another subject that uh, is very debatable. Um, there's just a ton of research that toothpaste has nothing to do with brushing. And if you want to get, if you want to get serious, you know, they say a soft, straight, bristle, circular motion, two minutes removes plaque. And the research junkies say there's no difference between with or without toothpaste. But then the monkey side of the equation is, I mean, I know the reason I want to brush my teeth in the morning the most is because it tastes like I just ate roadkill. Beauty breath. And, yeah. and the breath. And that's why I didn't like that big controversy about the sparkles, you know, some hygienists were finding a couple blue sparkles under the gum and everybody had to, well, maybe that blue sparkle was the only thing that made Junior stand up on the deal and brush his damn teeth. I mean, I, I, do you remember, hey, do you remember when our, my granddaughter Taylor, she was about three and she filmed her own video of brushing her teeth. Do you remember that? I don't actually. Oh my God. Oh, she ask is Ryan. so cute. How old is she now? She's five. I didn't release because I thought, you know, she's three. I don't want to take advantage of her, but she took her iPhone and she turned on the video and she was going and she was pretending she was a teacher and she was teaching some invisible friend how to brush her teeth but it was like a 20 minute production she was running water she couldn't she could have filled a jacuzzi how long the video was and the running water and i'm sure but the thing is maybe that little sparkle maybe having a toothbrush and you know some you know what motivates them to brush so so my question succinctly is toothpaste do you need it do you don't what rant to me what your thoughts are on toothpaste so i don't think i think that you can get very good results without brushing and if you go and watch the coming clean video series that is on youtube um i actually brush without toothpaste because mint if you're using a mint toothpaste that'll numb the tip of your tongue that'll desensitize it so that you can't use your tongue as a detector to see if anything is still there. So I don't feel that toothpaste is the most important thing. However, toothpaste will help with biofilm. And so it depends on what you're using it for. If you're using it to help protect the teeth, if there's something that you've got going on as far as mouth breathing is concerned, if there's buildup, like what do you need, what's your purpose for toothpaste? And then find that right toothpaste that's going to work. Is it for breath freshening? I don't think that 
I, I think that the reason that we talk about using toothpaste is because it has fluoride in it. But most of my consumers don't want fluoride. A lot of the people, a lot of consumers are looking for alternatives to chemical laden products and um, and and fluoride. And so they they don't want those things. They want something different. When which I, is uh, why the 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 muds of this world and stuff like that and squiggle are all doing really well because they have they bring something else to the market. You know, I was on the um, fluoride campaign, the Arizona Citizens for Dental Dental Health, getting fluoride in the water in Phoenix in eighty mm-hmm. nine. It expired. We had to do it again. Uh, whatever nineteen eighty nine plus twenty is. Come on, Ryan, you got a college degree eight nine. <laughs> we had to do it in 2009 for another mm-hmm. 20 years. And I, it was one of the biggest impacts in my life because I realized how much public trust had eroded. Because the first time I did it, if you showed them studies from the Centers for Disease Control and the American Dental Association and the World Health Organization and all this stuff, they're like, oh, wow, I had no idea that there Big were 5,200 yeah. studies on PubMed. 20 years later, the CDC, oh, they're a shelf of the pharmaceutical industry. And you say the World Health Organization, they're, they're as bad as the Pentagon. And, and you look at the politics of today, the fake news, the, the, so there's just no trust. So I'm trying to coach Dennis that if a person says, you know, they're against fluoridated water, they're against fluoridated toothpaste, don't give them a lecture because they don't trust you. No. You're, you're part of the conspiracy. Give them, give them an alternative. Yeah, yeah, and you can absolutely arginine product, xylitol product. Yeah. Like get other things in their mouth. Help them pH test. Get them disclosing products. You know, like get them to the point that they recognize. Are you doing Cambra? You know, are you doing a caries assessment risk? Because not fluoride isn't isn't necessary. Fluoride isn't even recommended for everybody. If you're in a low caries risk. Fluoride does nothing to benefit you. So if somebody doesn't want fluoride, well, what are their risk factors? And how do we help create a relationship with them and trust in them by helping them solve those other risk factors? And then once you run through that gamut, then if you still don't have anything else that's going to work, then have the fluoride conversation. But don't lambast them into... This is why you need what to do. I, I hear it all the time. Oh, I educate my patients all the time. No, you're shooting on them, and nobody likes to be shut on. They want to be people go where they feel understood, not where they seek to understand. Right? So people's Say layers. That again, that was good. Say it again. People go where? People go where they feel understood, not where they seek to understand. So it's not like, hey, hear me out, hear me out. Right, and that's a good one. Say, say, it. say it again, third time. People go where they feel understood, not where they seek to understand. People feel validated. When you can, you know what it's like, Howard. When you're sitting with somebody and you're face-to-face with them and you're having the conversation, you can feel whether their emotional walls are coming down or whether they're going up. And you're that type of person that either people love you or hate you, right? There's not a lot of in-between because you're extreme right and so that's fine that's great but you know what it feels like when those walls are climbing and you're like oh crap there's something going on there's something I'm not missing just hear me out hear me out well the hear me outs build their walls bigger versus help me understand what you're feeling well it's a neurotoxin okay so let's talk about that help me understand why you're against these things and what are the risk factors can we talk about these risk factors first and just sideline fluoride people don't want to hear it they don't fly we sound like parrots Shirley Godowski always does that floss and fluoride floss and fluoride so they don't want to hear it it doesn't matter if it's good for them or bad for them they don't want to hear it and you sound like every other broken record of every other dental professional that says the exact same thing they still don't want to hear it so find something else that's going to work for ph control because that's cavities don't happen in a neutral environment right it's the balancing of the acids and the amount of times that you're down below in the acidic level it's it's balancing that and looking for other factors that are pH modulators and pH things that throw pH off will buy you some time. And then if fluoride is what you need because you can't find anything else that's going to work, 
then you can have that conversation and find one that's going to work for them at their level. Chances are. And the other thing I know with products, the main thing they want is all natural, all natural, like HPV, HIV, chlamydia, scorpions, tarantulas. They just want natural. And when they say, you know, is it natural? I, I just, I bite my tongue because I'm always like a, a natural, like, you know, uh, streptococcus mutans or gonorrhea. I mean, natural, like uh, a heart attack, you know, tell, tell me what, uh, you mean the black hole in the middle of the Milky Way that's going to suck the entire solar system into it and, and demolish everything? What, is fluoride going to fix that black hole? Oh, my God. Um, so, um. I mean, I could talk to you for 40 years, but I'm going to go to another, another, I mean, because the problem I have in my office, I tell you, you come in, I say, um, Carrie from uh, telekinesis, Stephen King, you have full mouth gum disease, you have a cavity on every tooth, and I explain mm -hmm. the whole thing for an hour, and then she says to me, can I get my teeth whitened? So um, that's, again, that psychological thing where a lot of people aren't standing in front of you at the dental office for the prevention of disease. They want to look sexier because the number one goal of a species is to survive long enough to reproduce. So that's why people pay more mm -hmm. for an iPhone because you're never going to go into a bar and get laid carrying a Samsung or a Droid. I mean, you want an iPhone, Damn it. the Gucci purse. So talk about tooth whitening. Any so a lot of tooth, tooth whitening. whitening, yeah, a lot of tooth whitening is actually because you're not getting into the nooks and crannies and the stain is building up. Once you can start cleaning your teeth effectively, they whiten. When you have more pH control through things like xylitol and arginine, they whiten. And if somebody wants to whiten their teeth, teach them how to whiten their teeth. But I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put this up. I'm going to put myself on blast right now, right? So I want you to see this really quickly. So here is a before picture, which I know it's a little bit, no, it's not I'm the so best. Good. Here's an iTunes, after picture. Switch to YouTube. I, 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 okay. It's just a photo. Right. It's just a photo. So here's this, okay? Here is what this just said. It has only been a few weeks, but look at how much less my gums are irritated. I've had bleeding gums every single day for years. I have periodontal disease, but have been unable to afford it, which this is horrible. I've been unable to afford deep cleanings needed because having our second child has really messed up my finances. All I've done is use the brushes and had some other products, but this all she has done is use the Tepe products. And of course, I've learned how to control brush and pH and monitor. I will never stop thanking Carrie. I have pink gums again. The top is before, the bottom is after. My gums have never not bled in my entire life. All I'm doing is brushing my teeth in a way that's effective. Look at the difference in color. It is more about controlling biofilm and buildup than it is about the whitening. And so if you can start there with them and help them get better results, they're going to get a different outcome. But because we've never tried it in the practice, we're always going to face that opposition. Always. Always going to happen. When patients tell me they want to take antibiotics because they're not natural, I say, well, why don't ants ever get sick? They have antibodies. <laughs> and then when, they, when they're concerned about cosmetics, <laughs> they always say, well, 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 the tooth you're making, I want it exactly like the tooth that was in there. I said, no problem. I'll put four cavities in it. Those are bad. <laughs> she didn't even blink. She didn't even think about laughing. But, um, well, hey, man, we went five minutes over. Our brand is an hour because they tell us their commute is an hour. Um, I just, I've been the biggest fan of you. Tell your hubby, Ebo, Thanks, hello. Man. Her websites are carrieibbotson.com. Uh, her other website is oralhealthcoaching.com. Um, Carrie, thank you for all that you've done for dentistry. And it would really make it easier for me because what's going to happen, and this is what's going to happen. They're going to listen to your podcast. Then they're going mm -hmm. to email me, howardedentaltown.com, because I give it to everybody, ask them about all these links. I wish you would go tell the homies now that you're going to go to Hygiene Town and Dental Town. Hygiene Town has 50 categories. Okay. Um, it's not like um, 
Um, so you go right to hygiene, and then you could sit there and say, Howard made me do it, if you feel like, you know, if you feel embarrassed or whatever. But but post all those links to all these products and companies and your website and all this, because my homies right now are stuck in traffic trying to get to Newport Beach, and they're cussing and they're profanity, and so they can't write down anything. So what I do for my homies is um, when you mention those companies, I retweeted them. I got 25,000 people following me on Twitter just for the links to what they're talking about on the show. And right. then Ryan sends these things and does a transcript. So when we post your podcast on Dental Town, Hygiene Town, Ortho Town, it'll have a transcript. But I wish you would go into Hygiene Town on Dental Town and Hygiene Town and go under Hygiene and list a link to all this stuff. I need to, I need to plug back in. When the new and beautiful app came out, I got locked out of it and I can't get back in is my problem. So I've tried every which way but Tuesday to get back in, but Ryan's going to help me with that because now Ryan is on it and he's amazing. So I'll get back in. He's I love so the amazing. dental town community. He's gorgeous. He's six foot tall. I'm pretty sure his mom had an affair on me. It might have happened. I'm gonna. I was gonna do DNA testing. And I thought, you know, at this point, I'm just you probably committed. don't I want really, to. I, don't I would know. just leave it as is. He's your son. It doesn't matter where the actual DNA comes from. Ryan, I he love is you, no matter what. And uh, okay. Hey, a, till next thank time. Thank you so much for coming on the show. Um, I hope you have the rest of a rocking hot evening. Thank you, Howard. It was wonderful to be on, and thanks for all that you do as well. Hi, guys. It's Carrie with oralhealthcoaching.com and carrieibbotson.com. And for those of you who don't know who I am, I'm a dental hygienist by trade and an oral health coach by passion. A dental hygienist is somebody who typically helps get your mouth healthy as best as they can with their tools and instruments. And an oral health coach is somebody who helps you at home get the best results you can with using better techniques, better products, better tools, and better ways of understanding and actually testing your mouth. The problem with oral health is so many people don't know how to look in their mouth and actually determine if what is in there is healthy or not. They don't know that there's things that you can use like pH testing or you know, staining your teeth or using tools that get into nooks and crannies a little differently. And that's what oral health coaches do. We help you get better results. So why am I here today? I am really inspired and intrigued by things that take big social issues and exploit them and then come up with a solution. I remember when Super Size Me came out and it was such a big deal because it talked about fast food industry and the problem that we have and and what the solution was to that. And then you saw things like forks over knives or fat sick and nearly dead or you listen to Tim Ferriss and you talk about the 80-20 principles and things that really help people take control of their own lives. And the most recent one was fit to fat to fit. So it was where personal trainers kind of let go of themselves. They stopped working out, they ate whatever they wanted, and it showed the progression of how they became unhealthy, and then they worked through their routines to get healthy again to inspire people to do the same thing. I have always wanted to do that with oral health because my life started in the dental chair. I had fillings, I had gum issues, I had lots of problems. I had teeth that came in weird places. As I get older, I realize I'm probably tongue-tied. My braces that were put on did a lot of the things that did the same thing that it does to a lot of people. It's kind of pushed things back to give me jaw joint issues. There's things in my mouth that are going on, but I've also learned how to take care of my mouth in a way that doesn't need a lot of intervention. So why am I here? I'm here because eight months ago, I stopped brushing my teeth. I know it's crazy. But the reason that I did that is because I know that I'm at a time in my life where I need to have some dentistry done. And in order to have that dentistry done, I need to take it back further. It's on my back teeth that I need to have some stuff done. But if I have my dentistry done right now, my jaw joint is not going to be happy. And if I just go to a regular dentist that doesn't look at things a little bit deeper like I do and like I teach the consumers and other health professionals to do, I'm not going to end up in a good situation. And I've seen that happen to a lot of different people who invest in dentistry and then they're in pain or their problem isn't necessarily resolved. So eight months ago, I stopped brushing my teeth because I wanted my mouth 
to get to a state, especially in the front, where you could see the problem and then see what it's like to back out of it using the right tools, the right products, the right techniques. So I'm gonna invite you on this journey with me because there's one thing about mouth disease is it crosses every socioeconomic border and it crosses every professional border. I work with CEOs that have horrible mouths. I work with children who have horrible mouths. I work with people who are in poverty and people who can afford anything that they want. You, I talk, you know, I talk to the consumers for a living and one of the things that people always do when you say that you're in the dental industry is they do this. People aren't proud of their mouths and part of it is is because it's so vulnerable and people don't know how to be healthy in a way that they're certain that what's going on is good in there. And I want to help you through that. I want to help you see what products and tools can do and teach you all different things that are out there in oral health that lead to overall health. It's called the Oral Systemic Link. And there's a lot going on. There's a lot to be understood about tongue ties and nose breathing and mouth breathing and inflammation and how it starts in the mouth. And there's so much. So I want to invite you to this video series that's going to show you different products and tools and techniques to help you get the best results that you want. So join me because it's going to be exciting and I'm not going to do it here because you didn't ask to see it. But if you want to see it, come over to my YouTube channel and subscribe. The link is going to be below. Also, if you go over to carryibbotson.com, again, the link will be below. You can sign up for our newsletter. And if you're looking for a program that you can do at home, guided by me, the oral health coach, go to oralhealthcoaching.com because that's where that program resides. I can't wait to share all of these things with you. It's going to be life changing for both you and I, because I have some great tools here that have been just stockpiling and I'm going to start using them. I'm gonna start right there with that oral DNA. So I'm gonna actually do a sample. It's gonna be sent off to the lab and they're gonna be able to tell me what bacteria is in my mouth. So that's gonna be one of the first things that we do. So subscribe to the YouTube channel. Let's get down to the nitty gritty of what works and what doesn't and why. If you have any questions, leave them below in the comment section, subscribe, and I can't wait to share with you what's gonna happen. Thanks for being here and I'll see you soon. Bye.